Welcome back and thank you for staying with us right here on Morning at NTV with me, Romeo Busiku. Election Watch is in your midst. And our next guests are newcomers to the NRM parliamentary race and also the way the party conducts affairs. Today we intend to look at whether they can be embraced by a party that values the traditional way of doing things, valuing its historicals mm -hmm. as well as those who tip to, who tore the line. Yes, those who... Mm -mm. There is again a I'll stay this side. <laughs> as long as you do not step on the toes of the chairman, mm -hmm. you are good to go. So with me in studio, I do have Professor Vinasius Baramureva and O Gracious uh, Musimenta. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me right now on Morning at NTV. Thank, Thank you for having us. So talk to us in your respective capacities. Why are you opting to run this time round? I'm going to start with you, Musimenta. Okay. Uh, good morning, viewers. Uh, Musimenta do Gracious from Buyamba Constituency. Lakai District. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, I'm a health services researcher. I do research. I've traveled places in the country. So I know the gaps, be it in livelihoods, mm. let it be in education, let it be in, uh, in health. So basically, when you look at Lakai specifically, when we are following maybe the UDHS reports, which is done by UBOS, you see that uh, if we are talking about education in Lakai, mm. really it is one of the least performing districts in the country. Uh, because based on the, on the reports I see, or I always read, the percentage of children 6 to 12 years, they actually there are 6 to 12 years who are not in school, especially in, in sub-county specific. Because I have Ramagwa, I have Kasankara, I have Duaniro, I have Kachera, and Kagamba. So when you look at Ramagwa, it is 16.3%. When you go to Kachera, that is 18.5%. So at the end of the day, if we include also Ramagwa, Kagamba, Kagamba is 20.4 and Edwan is 21.3. So <clears throat> when you look at education, in Rakai, it is worrying. Yes, we did a story here yes, on NTV. It is worrying. And government has programs. They, you, you start with loan scheme. Mm -hmm. Loan scheme is there. There is the district quarter system. There is UPE. There is a secondary education. So all those are programs to make sure that these rural people or people in the Lakai, they can benefit from government programs. So when you look at that education alone, you see there are a lot of gaps. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> when you look at uh, performance, there's what you call short-term hunger, especially in school-going children. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can see, you can see that these children, they don't perform well because there's that component of short-term hunger. When these children, they go to school, they don't eat. That's why me, I remember I, I got involved in a multi sector food security assessments in the country and I was in Kamoli. At least there are some school garden model. That's why I had to I had to say now, let me go back to Raka and I see what is there. There's nothing taking place. Office of Prime Minister has those programs, the school feeding programs chaired by OPM and also Minister of Health and uh, Minister of Education because it is a multi sector approach. So I'm trying to, to see how we can develop the place. Mm -hmm. So using government programs and, no, wh and what are yes. you going to be doing? You're, what are you going to be doing? So because I understand the yes. incumbent is NRM. You're yes. coming from the NRM. Of course. So what are you going to be doing different? That's why I'm here, to show the gaps. Because if you've been in the parliament for 10 years and everything is, is disorganized in mm -hmm. the district, be it education, that's mm -hmm. because all these programs are there to benefit the people equitably. It's a national cake. If the incumbent was maybe FDC would say that maybe they're not getting that access to resources but it's the nrm if this person wasn't getting the resources how best are you assured mm. that you'll be getting the same resources to do the same you see what what we need to be very open here mm. on the tv is there's government or parliament also mm. needs people to present issues or problems which the rural people are facing mm. it's not about keeping quiet in parliament on the floor of the parliament either nrm or fdc or which which party you have to present problems of the people that's why the government is even looking back at barazas. So before going that side, in, in other issues, mm -hmm. education alone, I'm trying, I, I try to write a concept mm -hmm. to operation of the creation, NADS, Miss Agriculture, and say, look, education is alarming this district. Can we do something? What about the issue of health? That's where I'm coming, I'm, I'm going to. Mm -hmm. But in education, that's why I tried <coughs> to grow before mm -hmm. four tons of seedlings, so that these people mm -hmm. can grow and have food. Mm. Okay, before and we cover issues of food okay, security. Okay, let's cover the health aspect, then we go to Professor so Finances, Madame When we go to health aspects, health facilities, they have a distance, five kilometers and above. 
So, now you see my mother like in Chituntu, walking up to Uyamba Center 3. It's quite a distance. Remember, we have emerging diseases, NCDs. Those are non-communicable diseases, hypertension, uh, blood pr br pressure, uh, heart failure, and other community illnesses. Malaria is, is high. The prevalence of malaria. So, yes. when you see such, such, such occurrences, especially in health, mm -hmm. now we have to say, what is the plan B? Is primary care grant coming on time? Maybe to support the sub counties mm -hmm. or health facilities within those sub counties. All right, hold that so all those Ms. are the yeah. gaps in Rakai district. All right, hold that so thought, Mr. Musimenta. Let's also bring in Professor Vinances Baramreva. Yes. Why are you opting to run for parliament this time round? Uh, you know by training and by practice, eh? if you look at the roles of a member of parliament, that is registration, providing oversight to government programs, appropriation, consulting the constituents that bring their views to parliament, mm -hmm. these are roles that can play very well. But what is more interesting to me is that link where you kill two birds with one stone, where I'm now able also to participate in community transformation. And that's what many of the people in the villages, in the communities want. They actually don't understand the roles in parliament. They want you to do community work. Mm. So uh, I realize that Ivanda is one of the places that is very organized. We have like, uh, you know, organized groups. And the first organized groups right from the very, very beginning are religious institutions. They're always organized. Now, even in Ivanda, we have what we call interreligious council. So these are communities that you can work with to transform the community. We also have organized uh, youth and women groups. We have also organized the like people like who are kind of in circles and so on. So also at district level, we have what the government calls the Mioga kind of programs where the municipality gives money for youth livelihood, women groups and so on. So I felt that with my expertise, with my connections, my networks, mm -hmm. I can actually work with the communities in Ibanda mm -hmm. to really transform the community. And for me, what is so critical and so important is about like continuity or sustainability, even if I do it for five years. Mm -hmm with them, have built capacity in them, and they can continue with those programs. And one of the things I decided to do, which I'm going to do anyway, uh, because the people have assured me they're taking me to parliament, so I'll give them 100% of my salary and all my emoluments. They will go to the constituency to support those programs. They're not for eating, but just go into those programs that are going to kind of uplift the lives of the people within even the municipality. Maybe my viewers did not catch that. Uh, Professor Venantius Baramureva plans to give up 100% of his salary to the constituents. Including the money even for their car. Even that will go. Totally in bed. No way. <laughs> <laughs> We've well, seen one too many the times. professor doesn't <laughs> lie. You see, some in of terms us, of health, what do you plan to do for them? You, you see, th that's the other element. Mm. When you look at even the municipality, their program should be done by government. Mm. Like if you're looking at roads, clean water, you're looking at health services, I'm going to work with the government to ensure that you know those services are prefected. Mm. But at the same time, in the area of health, uh, as part of the salary I'm giving to the district, we are going to use about 100 million shillings to train more nurses. Because the nurses are the ones who are within the communities all over the place. So I want to ensure they are well trained. So that even when somebody wants to deliver, they have somebody next, next door to assist them, you know, with deliveries and mm. so on. Then the, the other sector is education. You know, when you educate people, actually they become healthy. Now, if you look at the standards within Ivanda, <laughs> they are not good. Mm -hmm. So as somebody who's an expert in education, mm -hmm. I want to work with the communities to ensure that within the next five years, all teachers in both primary and secondary schools have degrees. Mm -hmm. We are going to train them from Ivanda University. And part of the money that I, I intend to give to the district, which I'm going to give the district, is for training teachers at Ivanda Second. I'm going to give them 500 million for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Because you see, if you don't train the teachers, then you can never raise the standards. Mm. So it's something I feel I should do and I'm going to do with the community. And for me, I feel this would be some kind of uh, what you call fundamental mm. transformation mm. within Ivan Administrative. Well, I 100% agree with that argument when you say that there's a correlation between information and improving people's lives health-wise. Yes. Because even in the coronavirus pandemic, mm. you have countries that have low information on COVID-19 having high cases and those with higher information being prevalent among the population actually having low cases because people mm. know what to do. If, I, <laughs> if I'm going to get sick, with, I can treat the symptoms mm. and I'll mm. be better. Even the product tracing becomes yes. much easier. It, it becomes easier and the people mm. themselves can police 
yeah. themselves and the communities. But yeah. we are not going to get into the COVID-19 aspect. Yes, okay. Let's talk about Parliament. Mm. Musumente, do you yes. believe Parliament is a place that can actually bring about idealistic change okay. for socioeconomic progress? Okay, thank you so much. So before answering that, as I've been informing you, mm. in Rakai, we have 87.6 people or youths who are studying, but they, have n they never completed senior four. So the point is, where are they going to be? What are they doing exactly? That's why now we have to let the population know that there are government programs, like this senior, senior inter intervene program of skilling youth. That's why I had to say, please youths, come on board and so benefit on this national cake. Mm. So those are the issues we need to inform the people, to tell people, look, these are government programs, to be not barring people, not going for barriers, like you're a master of barring people. No, let's just inform people that Government has programs to benefit all of us, especially on the national kick. Mm -hmm. So you're talking of, uh, you can help me repeat the question for the parliament. Uh, do you believe parliament is uh, the place to make idealistic change to bring about e socio-economic development? I believe so, but you see with especially this monetized politics, mm -hmm. that's why they say maybe the one with a lot of money is one who just enters parliament, mm -hmm. which is not the issue. Parliament is to discuss issues that affect the population, to make sure we make a robust change, improve livelihoods, health, and other issues. So me, I, I believe that somebody who is, who is educated, who is an articulate, and know the population, really can come on the floor of Parliament and discuss. Not about coming to Parliament and keep quiet five years, another five years, you're quiet, you've never said anything. Like in, in the reports, I read the new vision. My, my MP, they said, is he has never said anything on the floor of parliament for 10 years so i'm asking myself all these challenges in Rakai, in the Uyamba, roads from from lumbugu to liantonde people pay one thousand to be lifted to, to access a health facility to cross and go to, to Rakai district hospital so even i've been there i asked myself if you've been in the parliament can't you present these issues health go to education scholarships are there Programs are there to help the one inches down. Can't you bring these issues on for Parliament? Let's go on livelihoods. So that means Parliament so cannot bring about idealistic change if the people inside there are not yes. speaking up on behalf of the people. So actually, me, my, my worry is one. Uh, because I don't believe whether any early ideology is to go on Parliament and we keep quiet. I don't believe so. I myself, I met His Excellency. The whole issue is social economic transformation. Mm. So how can we do that? I was with a team from Macquarie University. How can we do that? We talk on floor parliament. We prioritize. Something we haven't been Yes, seeing. yes. But so why does that keep it's happening? Not, it's, I think uh, in Uganda, because even in, I'm not talking here on my MP, because I'm talking facts. 2016, he was ousted from parliament for education issues. You're getting? So at the end of the day, we need the people to bring issues on the floor of parliament that, that affects the people. All because right, at the end of the mm. day, this, the, this population, especially the, the rural people, they are the, the, the one who creates a large tax base. That's why we get taxes. Mm. So if we don't talk on, on programs or on issues that affect them or that can give them hope, that means you need to, you need to wait till you <laughs> organize yourself and maybe you learn right. from others. What are your thoughts on that, uh, Professor Venasius Baramureva? Parliament mm. being that place that can offer uh, change in relation to social economic progress? Uh, definitely, parliament in terms of registration, in terms of oversight, mm. even appropriation, it can really cause that kind of change. Mm. Of course, you know, as a member of parliament, we have to consult the people. Now, most of the people you know are rural, substance farmers. You have to so, consult so, the people. Yes. I'll get you on that. Continue. Yes. So we have to ensure that whatever laws will come, mm. we, that we, 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 we register on and like they're in place, they really like cause the positive impact on the rural people mm -hmm. because they are the majority. And of course the other thing is the issue with the markets, value chains and so on. And that's why for me I feel that we need more of the people in the private sector to join the parliament. Because when you have them there, they can also influence the policy, create an enabling environment. Like in this period of COVID, many people have produced, they have been producing, but they have no markets. You find somebody who's producing tomatoes now, is selling them at like a tenth of the price they used to sell them at because there's no market, mm -hmm. you know. So to me, really, through parliament, we can do a lot to transform the lives of the people, the ordinary people. And, uh, but you also must understand, we must have that kind of what is it you want to transform within the community. Like me now, I really want to ensure that in the next five years, all that these rural farmers, you know, who are into agriculture, 
are transformed, like their, their income like goes up, their efforts like are improved and so on. You want to look at the level of education, like their children are well educated. You want to ensure that health-wise they are okay, they have clean water, all that. So you can do it through parliament to ensure that when you are appropriating money for various districts, when you are doing oversight for how that money is being utilized in the communities, when you are looking at the new registration or amended registration you are coming up with, is really geared towards Iraqis pro people. Basically. Do you think these laws aren't working or aren't favoring the people simply because they are not consulted, like you mentioned before? Uh, yes and no. You know, there are some laws that may be... You know when the law is there? I'll because you, you mentioned I'll consulting give, the people. And yes, I'll I give an eager. example. I wanted to take you back mm. to 2017 age yes. limit, but I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I didn't want to yes, politicize yes. the conversation. Yes. But no one was... Mm actually uh, talk to mm. the people of Uganda were not talked to before the removal of age limit you get that and we are saying Where they drafting have, legislations that yeah. mm. help the people yes you know that is you, you know when you talk about talking to the people mm. you remember people are given money mm. to go to the consensus and consult the people well those are the views they brought to parliament is another issue but the people were consulted but no, they, they consulted a small cabal of people within their group they, <laughs> they, <did. MP>. <laughs> they <laughs> consulted people <laughs> in their strongholds yes. Every MP was free to consult. Yes. But going back to the issue of uh, whether, you, if you consult, don't consult, yes. it's either way. Whether laws can work. Yes, mm -hmm. because you see, the law is as good as its implementers. Yes. I'll give an example. If you look at, let's say, maybe the law governing higher education institutions, mm -hmm. it is the same law, mm -hmm. but you'll find different institutions will implement it differently, depending on their capabilities. So even you can turn a slightly bad law into good law, mm -hmm. if you're good at implementation. So to me, even with some of the laws we have, even without amendments, if you have a good MP, that MP can actually deliver within the constituency and ensure his people's lives are uplifted. Yeah. But having said that, we still need to have serious amendments. Yeah, I know there are several laws where we need to make serious amendments. Mm. And personally, someone has been involved in a lot of policy in terms of consultation and so on. I'm really good at that. And of course, amendments were made and passed by Parliament, the Presidential, mm. Electoral Commission, yes. the uh, Parliamentary uh, Amendment Act. They were all passed by Parliament, but then mm. we are still waiting for the President to assent to those. I'm going to get you on that. Yes. Let me bring in Musimenta and yes. we talk about the burgeoning uh, Parliament. In the, next uh, in the next parliament, we are going to be talking about 523 yes. Yes. legislators. That's a very, very big number. And the burden is going to be borne on the taxpayer. So we are saying some feel that parliament is really drained on the economy and feel like this money should be diverted either to the health sector, education, roads, and so forth, infrastructure development. What do you make of that? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, to me, my submission is one. There's what called value for money. Okay, so the voters, what they need is value for money. They are taxes. Mm. It's not about actually the number. If we, we try to bring in the issue of numbers, mm. I think there we go wrong. The point is, can somebody ac equitably access education? Can Kabong share on, this, on the national cake? Can Wuyamba, where I'm coming from, where I'm going to contest from, can they have, uh, can they know maybe NADS can give he first to us and we benefit. You're getting. Can, can legislators maybe design laws that are pro, pro people or pro, pro people who are poor still? So those are all issues. So what we need is maybe to look at, to look at is uh, are these programs hoping the people to develop, mm -hmm. to have hope that, you know, I have hope that tomorrow I will have food on the table. My children will go to school. So all those, uh, to me, I don't, I don't want to talk much on issues of numbers because th th that is at a strategic level. Indeed. I, I'm not in parliament as of now. Mm. Maybe I don't know why. But I don't you're know going there. Mm. I'm going there to represent issues that mm. affect Rakai mm. and the Yamba constituents and also benefit the rest of the country. But you believe we should divert that money to health, education and uh, other sectors? Uh, as a health services researcher, of course, we do pr priority setting. So we need to see as a country, where is the burden? Is it in roads? Is it in health? Is it in education? Is it in livelihood? Mm -hmm. So there we can prioritize and say, look, maybe for this year, <coughs> let's try to cut short budget for health or for roads, then maybe put into livelihood so that we empower these people who are poor. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> these are the people where we are taxing. Mm -hmm. These are people who pay taxes so that we, 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 we're a little bit reduce mm. on donor dependency mm. of course getting uh, me of course mr 
uh, Professor Venantius Berambreva, yes. when we talk about the burgeoning number of uh, parliamentarians yes. in the August House, mm. you're talking about the, the creation of new constituencies, yes. which is going to bear a very, very huge uh, burden on our mm. uh, taxpayers. So the issue is, should we do divert this money to health, education, and other sectors? And uh, before you answer mm. that, mm. let me take you back to the other question. Mm. The president hasn't assented to the electoral reforms. Will that actually offer an unlevelled you, ground? You, you know, the, mm. the, the, the Constitution mm. provides mm. for that. You cannot force the president to assent to the bid. If 30 days elapse, you know, <laughs> Parliament can send it back. And if it goes back three times, then it becomes law. Mm. So it's up to Parliament to do mm. that. But I think the president at some point is going to assent to that mm. bid. At the right time, he's going to assent to it. But now, you know, this country, I think... But if we go into this election without the amendments, what would that mean to the election? I don't process? think it will happen. You don't he's think the going president to to okay. he's going to assent to it. But if he doesn't, let's, let's look he, at that scenario. If he doesn't, mm. you know, the president is advised by lawyers. Mm. He knows his game plan. And you see, that's why many people have been asking the president mm. for almost 35 years now. Tell us of your success. Name a successor. But you mm. know, you have to understand where somebody's headed. Mm. And like, we've been talking about transitions. Mm. You've talked about the parliament like becoming larger and larger. Yes, yes. And you know, it started with the creation of districts. Mm. The districts were created, and you realize what they achieved. Yes. You know, when you have a smaller parliament, it's very, very hard to get two thirds. And now we are hmm? accusing people for yes. creating these districts. Yes, and when people started rejecting districts, we stopped. But you remember that parliament, actually, if it wasn't that big, would not have had the age limit lifted. You remember the parliament of uh, yes, <laughs> 1996? Yes, I, I see where you're going. Yes, so now I see this. People are now anxious to get, uh, to get cities, mm. which is a good thing. Mm. But again, we are going to spend money on the members of parliament. But mm. it's a good thing. It's going to provide the transition. I want you to look at uh, the, nom the nominees mm. for the president he's been sending to parliament. Many of them, parliament has been resisting them. Hmm? And uh, using my own knowledge and the experience, for me, I see that the next 10 years, the president is finally going to name a successor. And the successor may not be somebody you are comfortable with. So he needs these numbers, two thirds to approve that successor, which is a good thing, because all these things we do, you, you have an, an, I mean, an aim. <laughs> so, you know, let, let me tell you something. When I see people clamoring for this bigger parliament, yes, it is coming. But it's, it's not feasible in a democracy, an it, incumbent you know, choosing a successor. You know, democracy depends on how you define it. If, it. if you look at America, it's about numbers. So if people are clamoring for numbers, then you are giving somebody flexibility. And I think the place would have that flexibility, mm. you know? To, for example, say, I want this one as my prime minister, mm -hmm. I want this one as my vice president, and be able to do it. But if you look at, even at the last uh, nominees for cabinet, mm -hmm. you see some of them were being rejected, but finally had to accept them. Oh, Remember right. when first nominated soldiers into parliament? Ah, uh, no, into cabinet. And people said, no, they can't. Mm -hmm. But they finally accepted. So I think this, in the next 10 years, you're mm -hmm. going to see the transition you've been waiting for. All right, let me also bring parliament. in Musimeta. Musimeta, why do you think you'll be able to clinch the support of your party, which prefers, you know, people who do not toll the line. You see, with the social economic transformation, we need to leave politics of maybe politics of propaganda and then yes. go to politics of hope. I, Musimita Dugracious, as a youth, I have programs or I have ideas I can table on the floor parliament mm -hmm. that affects people across so all So you're sure ages. you'll get the backing of the NRM party? It's not about getting backing of the party because right now the party doesn't say Musimita go and be our flag bearer. Mm go and talk to people, convince them. Mm. If they can really see hope in you, they will send you as our flag bearer. You're, so, a, you're an idealistic leader. Yes, please. The NRM banks on historicals. Yes. So what we are saying, will they nominate you an idealistic leader? Is the NRM open to idealistic leaders? Or are they still banking on the historicals, those who went to the bush? I don't think that. Because if it means those who went to the bush, may I have never, may I didn't go to the bush. I'm not, I'm not a bushman, I'm not a what. So, me, actually, I think NLM is open to everybody. Mm. Yeah. As a youth or older, everybody is welcome in NLM. Mm. I'm not a spokesperson for NLM, mm. but what I know, that's why even I'm here. All right. If you go through, how best do you plan to navigate the primary campaigns and the consequent campaigns later? Uh, right now, we have, uh, of course, the, the COVID pandemic. So we're talking about budget really, campaigns. really yes. a very big problem. And these scientific campaigns, of course, people need to, what, what my people are saying, we need to see every, how the issues you are articulating to us. Mm. For example, in Uyamba, few people ha have radio, radios. Like TV, it is like even below 1%. 
So you see those are all issues mm. that that really we need to check uh, the party need to, to consider. They need to say maybe if like for example I for one I was in Rakai when we are distributing masks. Mm. So why if people got masks, why can't they gather maybe at a, in, in a playground and people express what they are going to do for people? Okay. Not about buying them with 500, 200, like, like people are sharing money now, 200, 300. Then and many say, people would think maybe that's what the incumbent did. You I cannot be in parliament for 10 years, you're not saying a word, but then you voted the second time. Was that commercialization of politics? Kid Kidogo, do something for me, I do something for you. And Quid pro quo, <laughs> let me also bring in Professor okay. Vinacius, yeah, but okay. I'm whatever. Yeah. Tell us, why do you think the NRM will back you instead of the historicals? And uh, historicals. how do you intend to navigate you know, the campaign? This thing of historicals maybe is in the media. Because if you look at, let's say, the army, most of the historicals are not in the army anymore. And even in parliament, look at the members of parliament. We have so many MPs below the age of 45. I'm mm. now 51. Mm. So those are not historicals. And NRM has been transforming really. So it is a transformed institution or a transformed party. So to me, it's all about uh, coming in to complement, complement what is happening. But I can assure you that NRM, I'm NRM, and I think NRM really believes in me as a person and I believe in NRM and mm. I think it will be good to go. I'm good to go. And Finally, the voucher campaigns are on the way in the mm. primaries and the main campaigns. How do you plan to navigate both? Well, I've already started. Mm. Even after here, I'm now going to even. The mm. virtual campaigns, we do it on radio. You meet people. You, I mean, not, not like Aren't you groups. worried about the cost and so forth? Mm? Of course, everything comes with a cost. Yes. But, you know, when people believe in you, mm. if they say, you know, like in the American system, when you say, I'm going to run for this office, people will come up and say, we're endorsing you. Mm. And when they endorse you, they go ahead and look for you the votes. So I believe that people believe in what I want to do for Ivanda. And we are so many in Kampara and even in Ivanda who believe in what I want to do. So they will go out there and solicit for the votes with me. Professor Venantius Baramureva and Mr. Musimenta Deogracias, many thanks for having made the time to speak to us. We look forward to having you again yes, on the sure. show. Yes. Most importantly, when you win. <laughs> <laughs> and we shall win. And we shall win, of Okay, wish you all the best. Thank uh, you're you. still <laughs> watching Morning at NTV. We're discussing a very pertinent issue. Can the NRM be open to idealistic leaders like Mr. Baramureva and Mr. Musimenta? That's the $64,000 question. So let's take a very short break. We'll be right back with more information. Moving a muscle would be a mistake.